kids. Do any of you like a mystery? Do you like to pretend to be a detective? Well, I, if you do, you're going to like this story. This is a Veggie Tale story, and it's by the Mess Detectives. And it's called the Don't Touchables. And it's got Bob the Tomato and Larry the Cucumber in it. Let's look inside. The Mess Detectives case number 239, the Don't Touchables. We got a file here. Let's look at the next page. The next page is also a bit of a file like the other one, and it says a little bit about the story. Percy P. doesn't want his little brother to ever touch his stuff. That's why Percy is burning mad. Little P. took Percy's magnetic man action figure without even asking. Why can't they just get along? Find out as detectives Larry and Bob sort through the mess. Okay, let's get into the story. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to read is silly. The names have been changed to protect the serious. This is a city where messes are made and messes are cleaned up. I should know. I'm a mess detective. My name is Detective Larry the Cucumber, and my partner is Bob the Tomato. He carries a badge. I carry a badger. Don't ask why. Do you see the badger? It's a little animal. Eleven twenty-three a.m. I was drawing doodles in my notepad when a call came in from the 45th precinct. Percy P. was in a mess, a big mess, and he needed our help. So Bob and I leaped into our police car and raced to the north side of Bumbleburg. When we reached his house, we found Percy in his room, looking really mad. What seems to be the trouble, Bob asked Percy P. My little brother has been messing with my things, he grumbled. Mm-hmm. I said, I really have a way with words. See the picture? Percy motioned toward his dresser. The top was very dusty, except for one spot. That's where I always keep my magnetic man action figure, Percy P. complained. But now it's gone, and I'm sure my little brother took it. Mm-hmm. Your little brother took the toy, I repeated, glancing up from my notepad. That's right, Percy nodded, and little P is never, never supposed to touch my stuff. Then that makes you a don't touchable, I pointed out. A what? asked Percy. A don't touchable. That's someone who doesn't like it when people touch his stuff. I should know. My former partner was always borrowing my things. His name was Elliot Mess, and he kept messing with my notebook and my notepad. It was very upsetting. He even took Larry, Bob said. Yes, Bob? Can we just stick to this case? Sure thing, Bob. I have to forget the past. What's done is done. Life goes on. One thirty-five p.m. After putting out a police alert for the missing action figure, we called Percy P. down to the station to view a lineup. Ten different magnetic man action figures were lined up against the wall in a special room. Percy looked at them from behind a two-way mirror. Are any of these action figures your missing toy? Bob asked. Take your time, I encouraged. We need a positive ID. I wasn't sure what positive ID meant, but it sounded good, really good. So here's the lineup. He's trying to figure out whether one of those is his missing toy. Percy slowly shook his head. None of these are my missing toy. My action figure had its arm broken off. <gasps> I looked up in shock. You mean we're looking for a one-armed toy, I asked? Well, yeah, said Percy. How did your toy get broken? asked Bob. 
Lil P broke his arm off last week, Percy explained. That's why I never let him touch my things. Elliot Mess broke one of my things once, I recalled sadly. The memory stung. He took my pencil without asking and he busted that. And after that, I asked for a new partner and we haven't spoken since. That's also when I became a don't touchable. I went on daring raids, barging into houses to stop kids from messing with their brothers and sisters stuff. I couldn't forget how Elliot had taken my Larry. Yes, Bob? You're getting off the subject again, he said. You're right. I have to put the past behind me. It's water under the bridge. I wasn't sure what water under the bridge meant, but it sounded good. Really good. Two forty six PM. We were called back to the P house where a four one five an argument was in progress. Things were getting ugly. Hello, ma'am, I said to Mrs. P. My name is Larry the Cucumber, and this is my partner, Bob the Tomato. He carries a badge. I carry a badger. Don't ask why. What seems to be the trouble, Bob asked. Mrs. P began telling us about how the P brothers grew up. Just the facts, ma'am, Bob told her. Percy and little P are fighting over everything in their room, she said. They won't share anything. I made a note of that. What we found when we entered the bedroom was shocking. Percy had run a strip of yellow crime tape down the middle of the room right between the twin beds. What's going on here? Bob asked Percy. I'm dividing my room in half, he said. Little P stays on his side of the room and I stay on my side. That way he won't be touching my things. If he doesn't touch my things, he won't break them. Something wasn't right here, but I couldn't put my finger on it. Maybe that's because vegetables don't have fingers. Percy blames me because his action figure is missing, Little P moaned, but I never took it. You mean you're innocent? Bob clarified. Yes. But you did break the arm off his toy last week. Am I right about that? I asked. No, Little P shouted. Did he say I broke his magnetic man action figure? Yep, I answered. That's not true, little P protested. It's too, shouted Percy. I was playing with his toy last week, little P said. I admit that, but when Percy saw me playing with it, he got mad and he grabbed it away from me and that's how it got broken. I made a note of that. The piece of, piece of the puzzle was beginning to fall into place. A lot of different facts, a lot of different pieces. It's all coming together now. Bob turned to face Percy. Is this true? Well, yes it is. Percy was at a loss for words, but that still doesn't give him the right to mess with my stuff. He was right about that. Section 3.5, paragraph 29 of the Messy Code made it very clear. My toy is gone and it's his fault, Percy said. You mean this toy? Asked Little P. While we were talking, Little P had crawled behind Percy's dresser. He came out carrying the Magnetic Man action figure, which was covered in dust bunnies, as was Little P. Him. Where'd you find that? Percy asked. Under the dresser and must have fallen behind it. Percy was stunned. He had never thought to look under his dresser. He was so sure that little P had messed with his toy. Percy, don't you see what's happening? Bob pointed out. You won't share with your brother. And when people don't share, things get broken. You mean like my toy's arm, Percy said. Not just that, Bob explained. When people don't share, they break apart friendships. 
Sharing brings people together. Percy stared at the floor, deep in thought. I was feeling pretty lousy myself. I couldn't stop thinking about my old friend Elliot Mess. What do you think about what I just said? Bob asked Percy. Suddenly, I couldn't take it anymore. I'm sorry, I shouted, beginning to sob. I pulled out my handkerchief. I know I should have shared my stuff. You're right, man. You're so right. Bob looked at me in shock. So did Percy and Little P. Even my badger seemed startled. What does any of this have to do with you, Larry? asked Bob. I never shared with my old partner, Elliot Mess, I said, blubbering. And as a result, I broke up our partnership. I broke up our friendship. Percy and Little P looked at me. Then they looked at each other. Then they looked at me again. Percy finally broke the silence. You know, Little P, you're my brother, but you're also my friend. And I don't want you to bust, I don't want to be the one to bust up our friendship. You're more important to me than toys. That's when Percy did a most amazing thing. In this city of messes, I've never seen anything like it before. He tore down the yellow crime scene tape that separated his half of the room from Little P's half. Then he said, I'm sorry. Two little words, but they did big things. Three fifteen p.m. When we left the scene of the crime, Percy and Little P were having a great time together. They were sharing their toys, and as they shared, they became closer than ever. It was almost as if sharing drew them together like a magnet. Magnetic men, or magnetic peas in this case. Meanwhile, I was on the car phone to my old partner, Elliot Mess. I told him I was sorry for becoming a don't touchable. To my surprise, he said he was sorry too. He said he shouldn't have borrowed my things without asking. I zero to four. I said to Elliot, just before I hung up the car phone, I wasn't really sure what I zero to four meant, but it sounded good, really good. <laughs> then I turned to Bob, who was trying to yank his badge out of my badger's teeth. Say, Bob. Yes, Larry. Anytime you need to borrow my notepad, just say the word. You can use it. Thanks, good buddy. I smiled a big toothy grin. I knew what good, good buddy meant, and it sounded good, real good. Oh, you want to see that picture, too? Well, that was a good story, wasn't it? About sharing. And the Bible tells us to share in 1 Timothy 6, verse 18. It says, let them do good that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share. So God wants us to share. He also wants us to say sorry when we've done the wrong thing. And that's what they did in that story too, didn't they? I hope you enjoyed today's story. Have a really good week. And remember to share. Love you.